Good morning and welcome to church. Today's parish concerns and celebrations are merely an announcement that next Sunday's drive-in church services will be held at 9 a.m. Today we lit the celebration candle for continued growth of our faith. And the Lord be with you and also with you. And if we could just give our neighbor a smile and a kind thought of the passing of the peace. So the peace be with you and also with you. Our prayer of invocation today, please. Meet us here, holy God, to search our hearts and strengthen our spirits. Plant your word among us so that it may spring up in nurturing, inviting ways for the sake of all of your creatures. May we find in these moments of worship the assurance that we need to live triumphantly in the face of loss, discouragement, and suffering. Lead us by teaching and examples of Jesus Christ to trust you and your will for us. We believe that whatever happens, you can bring some good from it. Show us, O oh God, the good you intend, and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pastoral prayers today involve continued prayers for peace in this unruly world, and also prayers for wisdom and safety as school administrators and teachers and students all work together to find a way to safely return to a school and education environment. We're thankful today that Carl is cancer free and we ask for continued healing for Jerry and for healing for Neil and for all of the prayers in our hearts hear us O oh Lord compassionate God take us to the place where we are saved from pride and arrogance where Christ's divinity humanity and humility is our focus. Take us to where we can lift up 
clean hands, and a pure heart to you. Take us to a place where we no longer see the obstacles in front of us, but rejoice in the life that you have given. Let us see clearly your light, your truth, and your justice. Abba, we bend our knee and bow our head that we may receive you. Open our stubborn selves that we may receive your counsel. Break the barriers that surround our hearts that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Hear us now as we come with you, to you, with the silent prayers of our hearts and minds. The first reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are, for we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees our hearts, knows what the thought of the Spirit is, because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. We know that in all things God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose, those whom God has chosen already, he also set apart to become like his son, so that the son would be the first among many believers. And so those whom God set apart, he called, and those he called, he put right with himself, and he shared his glory with them. In view of all this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God, who did not even keep back his own son, but offered him for us all. He gave us his son. Will he not also freely give us all things? Who will accuse God's chosen people? God himself declares them not guilty. Who then will condemn them? Not Christ Jesus who died, or rather who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God, pleading with him for us. Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it, or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we have complete victory through him who loved us. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. The second reading is from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 through 33 and 44 through 52. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man takes a mustard seed and sows it in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows up, it is the biggest of all plants. It becomes a tree so that birds come and make their nests in its branches. Jesus told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A woman takes some yeast 
and mixes it with a bushel of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man happens to find a treasure hidden in a field. He covers it up again and is so happy that he goes and sells everything he has and then goes back and buys that field. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for fine pearls, and when he finds one that is unusually fine, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that pearl. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Some fishermen throw out their net in the lake and catch all kinds of fish. When the net is full, they pull it to shore and sit down to divide the fish. The good ones go into the buckets, the worthless ones are thrown away. It will be like this at the end of the age. The angels will go out and gather up the evil people from among the good and will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and gnash their teeth. Do you understand these things, Jesus asked them? Yes, they answered. So he replied, this means then that every teacher of the law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who takes new and old things out of his storage room. Here ends the readings. as real as it seems the sunlight right before me the moonlight at my back the simplest of mysteries carving out a path for the day to begin with an open heart intention that I claim I have more 
In our sermon today, the story overview is that Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a little mustard seed. When this little mustard seed is planted, it grows into a huge plant. Many times of that little tiny mustard seed. And the parable of today's lesson can also be found in Matthew 13, 31 to 32, and also in Luke 18 to 19. A familiar site in Palestine was a six to 12 foot mustard bush filled with a flock of birds and the birds enjoyed feasting on the tiny black seeds. Mustard seeds were cultivated for their oil during the biblical times and were ground into powder for both culinary and medicinal purposes. The significant lesson that Jesus draws from the mustard plant is the fact that a huge, significant plant can come from such a tiny, insignificant little seed. The parallel is to the kingdom of God. Think of all of the little insignificant events that hold such huge meaning. A little out of the way town in Bethlehem. An animal's manger. An obscure carpenter and his young wife. A bunch of uneducated fishermen. A few loaves and a couple of fish. A rooster crowing. A tree that would someday be a cross. And a tomb with a stone rolled away. Sometimes it may seem like the part that we play in the kingdom is small and insignificant. Perhaps there are even times we think our congregation is so small that it can't accomplish grand schemes of things. But the parable of the mustard seed is a lesson to us that huge things can happen as a result of a very small thing. There were only a few believers in the beginning, but the number of the people who followed Jesus grew and grew. And that's only because the first few told a few, and those few told a few, and then there were more and more and more. So sometimes people think they're not important to God they want to do things to help the church, but they think the things that they do or could do are not important. Sometimes they give up just because they feel sad. Some people may think they're too old to even help the church. Oh, I'm just one old woman, they might say. There's nothing I can do except sew clothes for the poor people. Kids might even think they're too young to help at the church. I'm just a little kid. No one expects me to do anything. I can only do little things like come to Sunday school. Some people just might think that the things that they do are not important. So they just stop helping the church. I can only do little things like vacuuming the floor or straightening out the song books. They say no one would even notice if I didn't do those things. Those little things help the church anyways. Some people are sad because they think that their church is too small and they say, who would want to come to my little church? Some people who follow Jesus probably thought that too. Jesus wanted to teach people something new. He wanted them to know that everything that we do to help others is important. The big things are important and the small things are important. Sometimes we can do a little thing and it ends up being a really big thing. 
Jesus wanted the people to understand this lesson. So that was why he told them a parable about the mustard seed. A seed is a beginning. A seed is often very small, and it looks like it couldn't be anything very important at all. Seeds look like they're small, but they're the beginning of something. A very small seed can grow into something very, very big. So Jesus told the story about the mustard seed. And he said that once a man planted a tiny mustard seed in his garden, it was a very small seed, but it was just the beginning. As time passed, the seed turned into a plant. And it grew more and more and more every single day. As the years went by, the plant became a big tree. Birds would come to this tree's branches. So Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. They might look small in the beginning, but just wait. Someday, they can be very, very big. Just keep doing the little things to help them grow. So are the things that other people do too small? Are the things that older people do are too small? No, remember the mustard seed. Are kids too little to help at church? No, remember the mustard seed. Should we stop doing jobs like vacuuming or straightening out the books in church? No, again, think of the mustard seed. Should we give up our church because it's small? No, remember the mustard seed. So how can you remember the parable of the mustard seed? And how can you help? Teach your children your grandchildren, and others about your faith. Come to services, watch services, share them online, call a friend, pray every day, attend a Bible study class, even if it's on Zoom, support your pastor, read scripture a little every day, Nurture the seeds of your faith so that you will experience the strong and healthy growth in faith. We can always remember when we were little children once and a seed was planted through our own family, our church, in our community. We grew and we flourished as we spread tiny seeds mustard seeds of our faith in our own families and in our communities. Always, always remember, we are stronger and resilient like the flourishing mustard plant. Amen. Father God, as we leave this place today, I ask that you keep us safe and remind us to continue planting the seeds of faith protecting us and surrounding us with strong growth in ourselves and in each other. Amen.